Hi everyone, it's Don here from Crux Terminatus Minis. Um, as you can see, I'm going to walk you through my Valfex from the Astral Claws. Uh, typical Ford Road model, um, lovely detail, pain in the bum to get rid of all the flash, but I gave it the wash treatment with uh, Fairy Liquid and it got to work scraping off all the mold lines. Um, this one's a fairly old model now, I've had it for uh, over a year, um, so it was one of the first to be produced, the mould lines aren't that bad. Uh, just scraping away with a blade and some really fine uh, sandpaper to get rid of uh, the worst of it. Uh, not that it was actually that bad, I've had a lot worse from Forge World. And with Blue Tack, I was just helping myself to sort of visualise how it would look when it was all put together. Because there's an awful lot of weight disparity on the right hand side with the weight of that conversion beamer. So just trying to work out how I would have it and what I was going to do with the whips. The whips are a nightmare. So I used uh, Fire Red from Vallejo Model Air uh, as his base coat. I love this colour. I've used it on uh, Hellbrutes and uh, some other bits and bobs as well, I just think it's really really nice. Um, and basically obviously I'm going to use uh, uh, the Citadel Red to um, highlight the colour later on. So sorry it's gone a little bit out of focus there but uh, just getting carried away and uh, getting all spray painted before work. Um, so Blood Red um, to, to do the highlighting, um, went for the sort of 45 degree down angle. Um, just to, to give it a sort of overall colour. I was having some problems with my cheap airbrush there. Um, I was actually considering going to the dear one but then thought better of it. It worked enough to give me the base coat and then I obviously did some highlights with the um, just the, the normal paintbrush with uh, Blood Red. I absolutely love the way this, uh, this turns out. And it's very rare for, for me to say anything uh, that positive, but there you go. Um, I love the way this looks when it when it all comes through together. You get that sort of lovely dark sort of rusty red shadow um, set off against the bronze and the gold later on. It looks really, really nice. So just a very, very thin brush, obviously, and just painting some highlights on. Quite like the look, as I say, I... I I think the reds. I think red is rapidly becoming my favourite colour. Um, not that I have any reds in my own army. Um, I went for a highlight colour that actually turned out to be too pink. Um, so you'll see later on that I actually go over that exact pink line with um, just uh, more fire red to bring it back down in tone, and it seems to work perfectly well. So uh, I love the black and yellow little cables that's my sort of signature piece at the moment I do love doing that and I've used um, uh, old gold from Vallejo um, liquid gold range for the the cogs and the gears and everything love the eye effect I uh, just think it looks really really nice positively evil and I used a uh, clear blue to paint the um, the eyepiece say most of my eyes are in my army are red so if you've got a red soldier with a big red eye it wouldn't look right so I went for blue I think it really nice so uh, by this point in time the rule book for how to paint this from Forge World's perspective was right out the window because their model is just silver and I just thought it looked far too boring um, so I just painted uh, what I wanted to paint um, including uh, tin bits uh, cabling and all the rest of it. So I'm just using um, Mithril Silver straight out the um, out the pot here. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it covered the red uh, in one easy application uh, and I think I get away with it. Um, that's my 10 zeros brush uh, which I needed for that. Again the pauldrons were a bit more difficult. Um, I started off with Enchanted Blue uh, but the reality was I needed to mix a little bit of um, blue foundation in there as well just to, to make sure I covered it and I'm just covering the, um, the, the side of the pauldrons with uh, liquid gold uh, again really nice paint to use um, gives a really nice effect bugger to clean off your brush though um, and um, then just white onto the Astral Claws logo uh, again I had to make some changes to that because the, uh, the colour scheme just d didn't pop out as much as I would like it to do so I've gone for red uh, talons just to, to show the difference again am I happy with that not really but um, I, it was very late at night and I thought you know what that's as best I'm going to get it so I painted them both up the same and then I went back and tidied them up after this was done just because I was quite embarrassed actually about how poor they look but anyway never mind The conversion beamer, if you've never seen one before, is 
massive. Um, and I've had a lot of people say to me that this looks very steampunky, which I'm quite pleased with. Uh, I was kind of going for that sort of archaic, because if you the fluff says this is like thousands of thousands of years old, so I was trying to make it look as old as I possibly could. And then his backpack is really just a massive battery pack for the um, the conversion beamer um, and the a nebulary, which is his main weapon. So I was just basically painting them up um, and then slotting them together to find out how unbalanced it would make the model. It wasn't that bad. Um, these whips, proper paint in the backside. Um, my one was cracked all the way through from when I got it through from Forge World. You can see I'm quite worried about it. But I, I dunked it in uh, boiling water and curled it the best I could to try and get a sort of mid-whip type um, effect. I was given this golden acrylic stuff, which I'll come back to and explain a bit more later, uh, from a friend to try and sort of give us a power weapon feel to it. Uh, it didn't really work, um, so but I always said I would show you my failures as well as my successes, so this is one of those times. So standard base for me, um, nothing special, two bits of cork. So this is this uh, ultraviolet fine paint and basically what I'm doing is trying to make it as translucent as possible whilst painting on the top. So when you move the model and, and it's in your hand you get a sort of lovely purple green sheen on it uh, but you can't really see that on the video which is a shame. Um, I think if I was doing it again I wouldn't bother, it was a lot of faff for very little benefit. So I think I would just leave it inked um, which is what I did previously. So standard base for me, scorch brown, then graveyard earth, then rotten flesh. So fitting these whips caused me tears and copious amounts of swearing um, because they kept snapping and breaking. And in the end, I had to put the video camera down and focus entirely on actually fitting it together. So that's what he looks like when he's all finished. Um, I love playing him in my army because of his special rules, but ultimately uh, it's a piece, I think, just for the, for the display case because uh, those whips are just far, far too fragile. You can sort of see the purple uh, iridescence on the on the whips there but in, in the naked eye it's a, it's a whole lot stronger so thanks very much for watching I uh, hope you've learned something maybe even if it's how not to do it but um, please 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 uh, comment it makes uh, all the difference uh, and if you could like us and subscribe to us we'd be very grateful so thanks for watching